hey whoever's uh came by my little solar energy uh sustainability presentation my name is jay corbett and i decided to do a video because it will be a lot better to explain it this way so i hope you guys enjoy this video and if you have any questions after i get done explaining in this video about my presentation please feel free to ask me so let's get started Solar energy has been around since the beginning of time and has provided the world with heat and the natural energy to continue living. Solar energy is defined as energy derived from the sun in the form of solar radiation. According to Go Solar California, in 1839, Alexandre Edmond Becquerel discovered that certain materials produce small amounts of electric current when exposed to light. After him, came William Grills Adams, who, with his student Richard Evans Day, discovered in 1876 that a solid material, which was called selenium in the f near future, produced electricity when exposed to light. But Quarrel and Adams are considered the few people who have discovered the usage of solar energy and converting it into electricity. Through their discovery, we have been able to find different ways of harnessing solar energy as a renewable energy source. One main power source we use are photovoltaic cells. According to the EPA, photovoltaic cell absorbs light and converts it directly into electricity. One example of these types of cells are solar panels. Not only can we harness solar energy using these cells, but we can use it in many variations. According to the EPA, people can harness the sun's energy in two ways which include solar thermal technology, where heat from the sun is used to make hot water or steam. Then there is passive solar heating, which can be as simple as letting the sun shine through windows that heat the inside of a building. According to the EPA, there have been many people across the U.S. who have used solar energy for everyday activities like in a town in Wisconsin where people who are using solar panels to charge hybrid electric school buses. Not only is the U.S. harnessing this energy, but in 2010, China unveiled the first solar-powered air conditioner. The devices could help reduce energy use and greenhouse gas emissions in China and other countries. According to Alternate Power, some of the advantages of having solar energy are that solar cells make absolutely no noise at all, solar energy creates absolutely no pollution, and very little maintenance is required to keep solar cells running. And solar power technology is improving consistently over time as people begin to understand all of the benefits offered by this incredible technology. However, with advantages comes disadvantages with solar energy. Some of the disadvantages include solar power cannot be harnessed during a storm, on a cloudy day, or at night, and solar cells and solar panels that are needed to harness solar energy tend to be very expensive when you first purchase them. According to Energy Refuge, we are looking at the ocean for clues of future use of solar energy. Energy Refuge states that the ocean is a natural reservoir of solar power. <clears throat> Therefore, it could be used as a source for thermal energy. The challenge is to create a way to take warm water from the surface and cold water from the depths so that an ocean thermal plant could operate 24 hours a day. George Cloud is one of the few people who tested this hypothesis as early as 1930 in Cuba. Cold water from the pipe and warm water from the surface were pumped into a plant on shore. It produced 22 kW when the water temperatures were optimum and 12 kW when seasonal current fluctuation reduced the efficiency. So far, solar energy is still being tested and looked at as the energy source of the future. We still, however, have not cracked the surface of this type of energy and there may be different ways of using this type of energy other than the ways we have right now. Solar power seems to be the most basic of all energy sources. The way that it works is that the sun provides any source of any source that will absorb its rays into it and store it as energy, such as solar panels or the back of a solar battery. By doing that, the solar power cells produces electricity that goes through a current and goes to another to another external source that will absorb that electrical current. 
So, which is, that is, so that explains why solar panels are able to power numerous homes and buildings in areas where solar panels are frequently used by farmers and by local residents. After studying solar energy, I was able to learn a lot more about it. Some of the things I have learned about solar energy is that it is still being developed and it is still in the evolving stage. Solar energy, even though it's a renewable energy source, is a source that is scarcely used because of its many disadvantages, even though compared to the advantages, it seems to be the better choice out of all energy sources. I have also learned that other energy sources tend to be more dependable due to the fact that we haven't perfected solar energy storage yet. My first IS goal I used for this project was IS Goal 1.3, which is accurately describing sustainability as an economic, social, and environmental practice. By doing this, I did a study with some students around Otterbein, and I was able to ask them if they would convert to solar energy if possible. Most of the students stated that they would do t would due to how environmentally friendly solar energy is. Afterwards, I actually looked online to see if typical items we use every day can be solar powered and I found a few on Amazon that are. One of them include a battery charger that can store solar power in the battery up to 60%, then it can charge a phone up to 100%. When the battery is charging through a plug, it gets full energy to distribute the phone. That item specifically leads into my next IS goal, which is IS Goal 3.2. Students analyze and reflect on their own sources of identity and values. To complete this IS goal, I purchased and only used one solar powered item for a time being to see if it would make a drastic change to my lifestyle. Due to money circumstances that I was going through, I wasn't able to purchase the battery. However, one of my friends had a battery charger and I was able to personally use it for a few days before giving it back. I wasn't able to get any pictures, but I can show you the picture of it on Amazon. So here it is. To go into more description, I personally can say that it has be that it has be like changed my lifestyle drastically because taking it around with me while the sun was out and using it when I was at the communication building was a very great convenience to me. I looked at the battery charger as a way to improve my ability to make the environment better around me. By using less electricity and more solar energy, I am pretty sure that it would be more cost effective for more people around the world. Well guys, that was, that's my presentation. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and listening to me talk. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me after this video ends. If not, then if you could do me a favor, follow me on Twitter at J underscore Corbett. Or if you want to check out other videos that I do personally, go on to YouTube and type in OTT Cardinal 70. Thank you for listening to this presentation on my sustainability analysis. 